Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here once again. I am here today to review, th uh, not Thor, I was just talking to someone about Thor. <laughs> Actually the only person I've talked to about Thor, so anyways, I am here to review The Old Man Part 6 and aka the old couple but the th the thing is is that now you can kind of call it the old man slash the old couple because of something that happens at the end but let's just let's just go through the episode i mean at this point the show has become where the structure is you have these two stories you have the old couple and you have Excuse me. And you have Harold and Spider Freckles and their story. And you have those two stories. And then sometimes you get a shitty, unnecessary backstory uh, moment where nothing is really that important or amazing. Uh, last episode's backstory moment was so terrible that for some people that's all they talked about in regards to the episode. Um... Uh, so in this episode, let's just go through each story, and that, that'll be a lot easier. First, we have the old couple. And, you know, they work well together. I like seeing them together, even though I don't, you know, obviously I'm still not a fan of her caring character. Uh, because I, I just think when, when I was sold on the show from the trailer... I was not sold on, sorry, there's a spider that's hanging down, and I want to blow it, it's like a tiny little spider, I just wanted to blow it out of existence, uh, oh god, that sounded bad, <laughs> that sounded bad, uh, okay, ignore, ignore all that that just happened, uh, I do like her, but when I was sold on the show, I was sold on him alone. I was sold on, this is a story about a, a classic Hitchcockian type of story where you have one guy who gets hunted down by, like, the whole world because of a shitty bad guy, you know, especially, you know what it reminded me of at first was Frenzy, and Frenzy is my favorite Alfred Hitchcock movie, and in that one, you know, the, the villain, he basically has the whole police department in England looking for the main character and it's like really uh intense and it's uh really good uh it's a definitely a lot better than this crap uh but instead this show has basically become it's the typical bait and switch thing with modern movies and tv where you have a show about a guy and then you watch the show or movie, and it turns out it's all about a girl that the guy is with and that he's going to have to, you know, interact with and everything. You know, in terms of, it seems like her character is more important than his. Like, she, it's all about, like, her becoming a spy. And it feels like if this show continues beyond a season two, you know, I don't know, it might become all about her being a spy and then about his daughter being a spy and I just wish it would honestly be about him and be about like because he like I don't know I just I, I'm not a fan of this story I don't like it it's it's boring it's still boring I was looking at my phone the entire time and believe me I paid attention so don't uh, you know, I was like looking up and down, you know, I still watched the show, but if I hadn't have been looking at my phone, I would have fallen asleep, seriously. And so, it's all, this episode, first off, we start off with more talking, and yet again, it's another episode where they just talk, 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 and then there's a little bloop, there's a little bloop, of action like near the end and that's it there's just like a little boop, and it's it's not even that long like it's not a long boop it's like a like a, a second long of action and then that's it it's like 
okay, Jeff Bridges is tired. We can't do any more action. He just did one stunt, and he pointed a gun, and it fake killed someone. That's it. Okay, we fulfilled our quota. Let's move on to more, uh, I think that you are this. Well, I heard this one story. Well, I have an anecdote. You know what? You're stupid. Like, that's the whole show is just these pointless, stupid conversations. It's like a play. It's like a theater play where you have these characters and they're like standing around in a set and they're like, blah, 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 blah. And then occasionally, you know, they got to eat something. Uh, I don't think they've eaten a lot on this show, though. You know, usually in stage plays, uh, a typical, like, they always got to eat, 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 eat every couple of seconds because they think that it makes it more real. Uh, and, but they don't really do that. <laughs> they don't do that on this show. Uh, <laughs> maybe it would be more... In you know what? I think it'd be more entertaining to see these characters eat because I wonder, like, what's the difference between between the way that Jeff Bridges each eats versus the way that John Lithgow eats. Like, you know, do they, do they hold their forks differently? You know, stuff like that. To me, that'd be a lot more interesting than watching these pointless dialogue scenes where they just say the same things over and over again. Jeff Bridges talks about being a spy is hard. It's a very tough... And it's emotionally terrifying, and, and I become a different person. And then on the other side, you have Karen. And she's like, but it doesn't have to be that way. I want to be me. What's going to happen next? What's that? What's that? You know, she's the typical vehicle for the audience to where she's asking him questions. How does the game work? How do you get in the game? So this episode, it's it sort of starts off like in this really queer thing where uh, she's asking him how to become a spy. And the first thing that he does is he tells her to write her name on a napkin and then he puts the napkin in a glass of water. <laughs> And they spent like five minutes talking about the fucking napkin in the water. <laughs> I mean, this is just, this is, just, this is beyond, this is beyond anything I ever would have expected for this show. I mean, it, it's, it's like a parody. I mean, you can't, I couldn't have made that up. Like, I, I can't believe some of the things that they do on this show. And they expect it to be like this impactful drama. You know, the only thing that I could think of is they could have had a flashback sequence where his character does the napkin thing and then he does something really horrible. Like he kills a couple of innocent people. And then after that, the do doing the napkin thing would have more meaning because you'd have the emotional weight behind oh look it's like that time he probably did that a lot of times that's pretty dark you know it's something like that that would be more effective it would still be kind of uh, funny and uh, goofy I don't know if that's in the book because I haven't read the book and don't don't even ask me please don't ask me to read the book because I'd, I'd rather uh, jump in front of a moving construction vehicle uh so then he teaches her some tips and tricks kinda but every time he's like about to teach her something she either starts questioning everything he does or it cuts away to the other story so we really don't it, it felt just like they're killing time or like they're they're just kind of showing they're they're teasing you and they've been teasing us the entire season. Like, this this has felt like one long episode. It's not really felt like six whole hours of TV. Because every episode has felt anticlimactic. Like, they're building up to something that's not going to happen. And it's frustrating, because that's not how to do a TV show. 
or a movie or in anything. I guess that'd be a way, like, I guess that's kind of what Marvel movies do now, but at least Marvel movies used to be pretty good. Uh, like the one that Jeff Bridges was in, Iron Man, uh, that was pretty damn good. That had a lot of action in it. So that whole story was a fail. Uh, he doesn't really teach her how to be a spy that much. It's sort of like a another bait and switch where, you know, it's like, oh, that one thing that he taught her, that one little thing, oh, wow, maybe she'll use that and it'll be some sort of a twist where she's contacting him and she disappears or something. I don't know. And I don't even want to predict what's going to happen because I know it's going to be way worse than anything that I could think of. And so that storyline uh, did not like it at all. And then, so they go to this fancy mansion party and it's a perfect setting for a shooting, like for a shooting sequence, an action film uh, <laughs> That'll be another clip that's taken out of context. You know, it was like a Scarface type of mansion. And I was really expecting, not necessarily like an action sequence, but just something interesting to happen somewhere. And instead, it's the classic thing where the protagonist tells their apprentice to do one thing, and then the apprentice does another thing. And it's like, oh, why did they do that? It's really dumb. <laughs> and and so then Jeff Bridges meets up with that guy who he wants he wants him to kill Faraz, the warlord. The other I guess the other warlord? Like I don't know what this guy is. He's I guess he's another criminal guy. Uh and he, he, you know, they already showed what was going to happen in the trailer. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, I hope you say hi to him when you, when you meet up with him, implying that, like, I'm not going to help you, you know, regardless of what the context around that quote, the, the meaning was that he wasn't going to help him. And so that whole scene was a fail. And it turned out that he was going to do the classic action movie cliche thing where the person you think is going to help you is, is actually going to uh, take you and, and send you to the villain on a silver platter. But what ends up happening is that Jeff Bridges does like a two second action scene where he he yanks a guy by his tie and slams him into a desk and then he takes his gun and shoots him and shoots another guy on a balcony. And that's it. And that's all we get to see. And then, instead of getting to see more of him having a fun, action-packed shooting rampage against these bad guys at this mansion, this cool mansion, looks like it's from the 80s, instead of getting to see that, uh, which, let's admit, we all wanted to see that. That's what the show is about. It's an action show. It's not a melodrama. It's not a soap opera, but instead of getting to see the action, we get to see Karen, and she gets pulled away from the bar by Faraz's lawyer, and his lawyer offers her a way out. And she, and it's just like, what? Like, now we're going to do this? Like, just, what the fuck? Like, just, ugh. Like, like just stop. I, like, I don't care. And, and and then in the background, to top that off, that disappointment and that really shitty story, we hear Jeff Bridges shooting in the background. And it's like, God, why couldn't we see that right now? Like, why couldn't we see that sequence happening instead of this crap with the, with the you know, we could have literally traded this to where we see the whole shooting sequence and then he, he comes out to get her, and we just see a flash of her talking to the lawyer. Ooh, that's a bit more mysterious, isn't it? You know, that would that would have been a lot more entertaining than 
the lawyer and her standing around talking for another five fucking minutes. Uh, but what, what ends up happening to conclude that sequence is even funnier. Because the whole crowd is just like calmly like standing there. But then all of a sudden, Jeff Bridges just pops up out of nowhere and shoots a guy right behind Karen and then grabs her away. And it's like, <laughs> this is just the stupidest... Like, that that was so cartoony and, and, and goofy, the way that he just pops up out of nowhere. And that, that was... And then everyone starts screaming, just magically. So a guy with a gun... He, he just, like, teleports. Like, it was like a video game glitch where he teleports all the way to her character and then just shoots, like, another NPC and then grabs her and, you know, that starts the cut scene. So that whole sequence was, was shitty. It ended up, at the end of the episode, something okay happened that I liked, but everything else the whole episode was pretty pretty mediocre and dull, uh, as I expected, though, at this point. The other story was John Lithgow and Spider Freckles, and their story is they're going, they're traveling across the Middle East to meet up with the old man, I mean the old couple, and along the way, it's kind of more along the same lines, the same story from last episode where she's questioning who she wants to be. He's questioning if he wants to stay loyal to her or if he wants to treat her like a felon. And so he gets this offer that he, that he refuses <laughs> to where he would betray her. And it's exactly... Isn't that funny? It's exactly what I thought would happen. Where he would, he would, there would be some choice where he would be asked or maybe made to betray her, and then he wouldn't. And because he loves her as much as Jeff Bridges does. Aww, saw that coming a mile away. And then they talk about it, and I will admit, there's this whole sequence at I think it was a train station or airport or something, and uh, they talked there about it, and I did like that whole sequence, actually. Uh, it was a very good sequence, because you actually did, you actually did kind of like both characters. I mean, especially John Lithgow. Uh, he did such a good job acting this episode. I really hope that he gets an award for his acting, because I really think he's been the best actor this, uh, this season. Like, Jeff Bridges has failed, because he hasn't really had any action on an action show. You know, at least with John Lithgow, you expected his character to not really have action, because he's just this guy who calls shots on the phone. He's not really a in-the-field action type of guy. But Jeff Bridges' character... His whole character was supposed to kick ass this series, and he doesn't really kick any ass, except for, I guess, the Karen's ass, uh, in some way or another. So, that whole sequence where they, they say their final goodbyes, and she says, you know, you should take the offer, because I'm just nothing but a spider freckles anyway... <laughs> And he's like, oh, really? <laughs> and, then he, and then he hugs her, and it's like, yeah, finally. And he just walks away. You know, he, he did such a quick turnaround from the hug, from hugging her. He, he was just so damn excited that she, it was like she gave him a hall pass to go do something really bad or something. Because he just turned around. He was like living on another planet. Uh, but then he kind of had some regrets. And then... The, the greatest moment of the episode was when you hear the sound of this salesman, this panhandling boy, and you saw him earlier talking to the hitman, and then you see the hitman on the escalator with no dialogue, and they just look at each other, John Lithgow and the hitman look at each other, and then he walks down, and he sees a van, and he realizes that it's all gone wrong. 
And I, I thought, like, that was a really, really good uh, sequence, actually. I really liked that sequence because it, it was real suspense. I did actually feel like, uh-oh, what's going to happen here? Like, I thought there might be, like, a bad thing that's going to happen in this uh, place now because of the... And, and then they did this thing with the sound where all the sound turns down. And it was pretty good. I really liked that part. So I guess one good part since, like, I don't know, episode two. I can't even remember what was good. Because everything has just been the same since, I don't know, episode one. Everything has just been the same old formula and finally, they did something a, a little bit interesting. Oh, and I forgot to mention Spider Freckles. She had a whole monologue or this this whole rant rampage where she talked about what love is. So if you want to know what Spider Freckles thinks love is, you're going to like this show. And no, she's not talking about Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, but it is also funny that it's in theme with that terrible movie and then it all ends with she gets kidnapped because as we all knew her character she's just a plot device to be like rescued or kidnapped or in danger so that Jeff Bridges and John Lithgow can go oh no it's the daughter of the warlord's wife oh no Belvedere's daughter <laughs> Belvedere's daughter has been taken like oh no and then you're gonna have both uh dads on the phone doing the whole Liam Neeson thing uh but it's gonna sound really pathetic because we know that both of them haven't really done much action the whole show have they what ends up happening though at the very end is that John Lithgow and Jeff Bridges meet finally and it was actually another nice moment because they're both such great actors and I really can't wait to see them on the, in the same scene working together. Uh, I hope that it's not another bait and switch where it's going to be really shitty and dull. <laughs> and, and then it's also another bait and switch, uh, which probably the biggest bait and switch of the whole show is that John Lithgow says that the old man took your daughter. And so I guess the whole show, from the very beginning, it's not... J Jeff Bridges isn't the old man. The warlord is. The bad guy is. The villain is. The old man. And I thought, that is the stupidest twist. Like, really? Really? Like, just, what? What? Or wait, yeah, because there was a, a, an older man on this show earlier, and he's the one who gave John Lithgow the idea to put a hit on on uh, Jeff Bridges. Uh, so he could have been the old man. So see, you already have this sort of weird thing where it's like, why does John Lithgow have to call him the old man? You know, why is... The warlord, why is he being called the old man? That's just, what? Ugh. I mean, way to, way to ruin a good moment, too. Like, I laughed out loud when I, when I heard the old man has her. I was like, God, why would you do that? Uh, so anyways, I would give this episode, I can't give it an F like previous episodes. I, I think I'll give it a C minus because I, I really did like that sequence with them saying their goodbyes and I liked at the end when uh, the two friends reunited and so I liked both of those scenes so I can't really give it but it's still it's the same shit like talk 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 even with the bad guy who or I mean I guess the criminal guy who Jeff Bridges talks to what does he go in there and do? talk, 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 and it's like, if you took a shot every time these characters just talked and talked, you'd be dead, 
you would be deader than uh, George Washington, for example. So anyways, please like this video, comment, tell me what you thought of the episode, because I know that there are people who are going to call this a masterpiece. Oh, oh God. <laughs> and then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more honest reviews of the old man. Goodbye, everybody. See you soon.